Welcome to our fourth webinar on the top fiber questions to our technical support teams. My name is Wayne Allen and I will be your host for today's webinar. I'm the regional marketing engineer for the Asia Pacific region for Fluke Networks. In today's webinar, we will look at optical loss test set test results and how you can read them or should I say, read them correctly. You can learn a lot about a fiber installation from the test reports. So it's very important to make certain you get accurate and high quality test reports that show how your fiber installation was tested. To start with, let's look at the basics of the test report. We're going to review an optical loss test set report from one of the Fluke Network's Certifiver Pro products. And this is a quad product that handles multi-mode and single mode testing. First thing we need to know, did the fiber pass? And as you can see here in the top right corner, we have a green check mark. So it's that green check mark. So a, a test appears good, but is it? There are hidden things here that could show that the tests weren't carried out correctly. Unfortunately, too many reviewers stop here rather than digging deeper. As they say, the devil is in the detail. So the other thing we go looking for is what test limit was used? Is it the correct limit for the fiber that was tested? Here, our technician used the current ISO test standard. And equally, they could have selected the TIA 568.3-D limits, and that would have been fine as well. It really depends on what standards your country follows. Now, if you see asterisks around the limit, that means a custom limit was used. And if you see that, good practice says that you should be asking the technician about that, especially if the asterisks are around a known test standard. That could indicate that the test limit was fudged a little bit. So you really need to look at this line and make certain things are on the up and up, as they say. From here, we would go and look at the actual loss measurements. So if you have a look at the loss measurements, the first thing is, do they look reasonable? And the first thing you're looking for here is we don't want to see negative losses or what we in the industry sometimes call gainers. You know, this is a passive optical system. You can't get gains in a passive optical system. If you see a negative loss and it's the loss value with a negative sign in front of it, it means something was wrong with the testing. And in fact, our certifiver will fail links with gains over 0.09 dB. So you can't submit bogus test results due to poor measurement technique. Another tip here, if you look at these results, is these are single mode. And for single mode fiber testing, the results from both wavelengths should be similar. So 1310 and 1550 are both 0.4 of a dB per kilometre at both of those wavelengths. So we would expect to see the losses very, at very similar levels. One of the things we look at is if they're not within 0.5 of a dB, you have to suspect a bend or a crack in the cable it could indicate an installation issue, even though it says a pass. There are other things here that you need to look out for. 
So from the result here, you can see that they are within 0.15 of a dB. So no problem with these fibers. And if you look at the bottom result, that's within 0.34 of dB. Another very important piece of information for us is at the bottom of the test report. And right here, we can see what applications will work on our link. So based on the test results we've, the technician has achieved during the testing, what we do here at Fluke Networks is place at the bottom of the report what compliant network standards will actually work on this fiber install. If your application is not here, it's because either your losses are too high or your cable may be too long. For example, 100 gigabits per second on OM4 fiber should be no longer than 100 meters of cable length. So it's important that you check everything on this report to see that the information supports the pass indicator, the big green tick in the top right hand corner. Another very important thing to look at is referencing. Connector and splice counts. And I have those indicated out across on the side there. In most cases, the reference method should be the one jumper method. If you don't see the one jumper method shown here, ask the technician why not because that could indicate the wrong reference method was used when the technician was making the measurements. And the implications there are that all the test results are invalid because a wrong reference method was used. And if you look here at the top of this list, do the splice and adapter counts make sense? For a straight link like this one, two adapters, and when we say adapters, their mated connections is correct. One at either end of the link. If splicing was used in that sort of configuration, pigtail splice, sort of termination methodology, you would expect the C splice count at two. And in my particular case, the link here was a factory terminated link. So there was two adapters and no splices. And I've got to point out here that unscrupulous installers will add excessive adapters and splices to create a larger test budget to get a link to pass falsely. So that green part tick up the top there may not be valid if the adapter and splice counts are wrong. Equally so if the jump, the reference method of one jumper is not shown there. If you're unsure, get an OTDR trace from the technician as well. An OTDR is very good at detecting splices and connectors. So its display will show all adapters and all splices on the trace. So if what the trace from the OTDR shows is the same as what's here uh, that the technician has set up on the optical loss test set, you know that it's been done the correct way. It's a way of keeping people honest. And if you have a look there, reference date, note the date and time of the reference. Check the cord validation data. And I'll have that on the next slide. They should all align. The dates and times of referencing should align with the cord validation and should 
aligned with what's in the test result. If not, look for some reason why the referencing was changed. And don't be afraid to ask the technician why, so you understand why the times that references was set and how they set varied during the installation testing. With FLAC Network's test reports, re-record when the referencing was done and what shape the test reference cords were in. We refer to this as test reference cord validation. Make sure these reports or these tests are included in the test results that your technician supplies you. Very important. This is proof that the right test cords were used to achieve the results and that the cord losses were low enough. The idea of the one jumper method with test reference cords is they contribute negligible loss to the measurement. We've referenced a cord out at the start, so it's not contributing, and the tail cord is so low in loss, better than 0.1 of a dB, it doesn't add to the overall result. We have seen some unscrupulous operators that will use test reference cords to set a reference before they start. So it appears that you have a good test reference cord validation result. Then they will set a second reference with patch cords to keep their costs down. Unfortunately, if they do that, you are getting bogus test results and your test results are invalid. So with a good robust reporting system like Fluke Network's Linkware, you can't get away with those dubious methods. They become obvious because those dates that I showed you in the previous slide will not add up. You will have different dates for referencing in the TRC validation and the time will be different to the actual reference date and time shown in a test result. When looking at a test reference cord validation result, check the date and time as I said on the previous slide. And I've got that indicated here on this slide. The data should be the same in the test result for each fiber, and we saw that earlier. So if your TRC validation result and your test results have different reference data, especially around the date and the time, you need to be asking questions of the technician who did the testing. Because something just doesn't add up. But unfortunately, that small factor is often overlooked by people reviewing test results. Remember what I said earlier. If a reference is wrong, all the subsequent test results will be wrong, even if they all say pass, because the data is unreliable. Well, that's all we have in today's webinar for you. I hope you found this information informative. If you have any further questions, please feel free to email us at apacmarketing at flukenetworks.com. Now, a lot of the material here is based on our Top Fiber Questions ebook. If you would like your own copy of the ebook, just go to the web address shown below here, and that's www.flukenetworks.com. Request Top Fibre Questions Digital Handbook. With that, I'll wrap up this session for today, and I thank you for your time 
and attention. Until next time, thank you.